Looking forward to talking to us uh, during, <laughs> during that game. Uh, which is, you know, in the second half, you did make a couple stops when you guys had to, and just yeah. to, to slow that passing attack uh, down and to try to. What was that like? Well, you know, it's never fun in that situation. First of all, you got to tip your hat to San Jose State. You know, I'm not going to say you don't take anything away from. Obviously, they had a, a good game plan, but really the execution, they did a really good job. Now, on our part, we have to find a way to win those one on one situations and, and uh, put ourselves in better position to make plays when they're throwing the ball that much. You know, we did a pretty good job of hitting the quarterback, didn't get the three sacks we, we wanted to, but we got him, I think, on the ground 10 plus times. So, you know, on the, on the other end of it, though, a lot of those were still completions. So that's the big focus this week is, you know, and, and every play, whether you're D lineman, you know, or a, or a defensive back, there's a start, there's a transition, there's a finish to a play, you know, and, and whether, like I said, D lineman, that might be get off, that might be strike. At some point, you got to come off the block and then you got to make the tackle. Uh, defensive back, you're going to start. At some point, you're going to go from facing this way to turning around and running with the guy, and then there's a finish. So we're really focusing on high speed finishes this week to make sure that doesn't happen again. But, um, you know, like I said, I'm tipping my hat, they did a good job, but we've got to do a better job of making sure we don't get in that situation in the game. How different is it playing in Wyoming that likes to run first versus San Jose that likes to pass? Yeah, you, you couldn't get uh, two more different teams. But that's kind of the nature of this league, you know. And, uh, you know, been there in other leagues, and it, you face Air Force, and then, you know, a couple weeks later you're Hawaii, and then you're, you know, all, all those different things. So you got to be able to flip the switch, and you can't sit there and hang your head. You know, it wasn't it wasn't the best game. We all understand that, and we don't. that's not the standard here, and it never will be. But... You know, we got to get our chin up and move eyes forward and go, you know, because this is a physical outfit that we're about to play, and we got to put ourselves in a position to stop what they do. You know, with that being said, you ended the game on an interception. Yeah. And, I mean, no, no. How, how important is that going forward to that? You talked about it the last couple of weeks. you got to get this, got to make yeah. the catch when it's yeah. there. Yeah, you technically ended the game on an interception. That's got to be big going forward mentally. It is, it is. And really, uh, you know, Ben got one in practice, you know, and what we keep talking about is, and, and it was one of the last practices we had. And, and, and you know, there's other guys that had interceptions through the week and all those things, but you want to make practice as hard as you can so that it, the games are easier, you know. And so we've got to do a better job as coaches of that, players of that, and putting ourselves like in that mind frame of whatever rep it is, it's like a game rep, you know. And so, yeah, we're happy definitely to finish that game on an interception. But we just got to look, you know, and we talk about it, we've talked about this here before. It's like when we, when we win a game, we play really well on defense. You know, we've had games where we've played pretty dang good, but we still come back and say, okay, uh, what what are those those little moments that could add up? And if our offense isn't pounding the ball like they did, they did a great job, absolutely running the ball down the field. But if that isn't happening, hey, we're, we're sitting here on a different type of day. You know what I mean? So we want to make sure, you know, we, we take care of those issues. With a... Uh... What a good Josh Love was. I mean, how good was he in that game? I mean, there were moments where it seemed like you guys even knew what was kind of coming, and, and he was so accurate at times that he was still yeah. there. Yeah, you know, and I'll, I'll like I said, I tip my hat, and and really, you could see that he was he was laser focused. There's no doubt about it. You know, and when someone's playing like that and they're playing at that level, well, you got to match that. You know, and so our focus has to be there, like I said, through the start of a play, through the transition of a play, and all the way through the finish of a play. Um, because, you know, yeah, like you said, you could see it from pregame that he was very locked in. And we understand it's everybody's biggest game. We understand, but every game should be our biggest game, too. And there's a reason for that. So, um, you know, like I said, he, he did a great job. There's no doubt about that. And he showed some toughness, too. I mean, he, he, we got him on the ground quite a few times. He kept coming back. What do you see in Wyoming's offense? What what do they do well running the ball? Obviously, they guess have to change the quarterback. Yeah, change the quarterback. Uh, played against us last year, you know. So he, he's he's still a veteran. So it's not like we're you're getting a guy's first start or anything like that. And, and you know we've faced backup quarterbacks in good and bad situations this year. So that that really shouldn't affect how we prepare. But the number one thing with them is stopping the run. There's no doubt about it. They're a big physical group. It starts with the run. Uh, they're very capable in the pass game, but. Uh, I think it's 250 yards rushing a game. I mean, that, that, that says a lot, right? And they have, a, they have a very good tailback, and they have a big physical O-line that try to maul you. I think the tight ends do a good job blocking, and they can get you in the pass game a little bit. And they do a good job game planning, you know. Um, you know, Coach uh, Coach Bull's been there a while and does a very good job. And so, coming off a of bye week, you got to make sure that you are sound in your scheme, you're sound in your rules, you're sound with your eyes. You know, and you want to play ahead of the snap as much as you can. But you have to anticipate that they're going to show some wrinkles, and then your rules take over, and your assignments take over, your eyes take over, and you got to make plays.
What's allowed Markel Lewis to earn more playing time at that corner spot? You know, he's just he's done a good job. You know, in, in the situations that he's come in, hey, he's performed. You know, there was a couple plays there um, when we were talking about finishing. You know, there's a third down where he was in somewhat of a tough situation based off the route, and he stuck his foot in the ground and go, went and got the stop. You know, he came in in Hawaii in a tough situation. And, you know, what we're looking to do with him is just build on it. You know, his upside is, is huge, but it's like those daily habits like everybody else. That they, if we can continue to improve those, hey, he's got a high ceiling, that kid. It appeared that Avery had a rough game defensively. I don't know how he graded out. Is that an outlier? Was it a bad game? Are you looking at different kinds of issues there? Or? Well, yeah, and, and really it goes back to some technique things. You know, Avery's an absolute stud, and we, we know that. And he's a guy that studies the game and then comes in and makes an unbelievable play on special teams. You know, Avery's a guy that, that thinks things through. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of guys on this team that, that – um, on every team that you're making sure, hey, you got to stay on this, stay on this. That's a guy that stays on, you know what I mean? And, and not every game is going to be your best game, you know, but he's a guy that also can keep his eyes looking forward and understands, like, okay, he's a guy that can truly take what happened, learn from it, and then move forward. And I have no doubt that he can do that. How, how, how tough was that game for some of your PVs in, in the sense that, um, I mean, it seemed like, you know, with pass interference penalties and stuff like that, it seemed like there were, you know, times are close to a breaking point, but, you know, they, they have, I mean, I, I go back to the one where Avery's sticking his hands up and acting like he's, you know, defending the guy in the P.I. Yeah, it, I mean. you know, P.I. is a funny thing. It's kind of like holding on the offensive line. I mean, you, you, it's, it's, a, it's a judgment and it's a snap decision. What we don't want to do is stop playing aggressive. You know, that's the thing. You start playing loose and soft and, and now it's routes on air. We don't want that. So, um, yeah, it's frustrating. There's no question about it. It allows drives to extend and all those things. And uh, But the biggest thing is our response. We, we've still got to do a better job of once those happen and once the drive extends is, all right, bowing up our, our necks and getting those things stopped, you know. Uh, and we can do things as coaches to try to help those guys out too. But, uh, again, it's just it's a total team effort. And when you're in those situations in a game that's getting away from you like that, it, one thing I know that we did not do is quit. You know, you, you, I wasn't on the sideline, but I could hear it through the phones. Like, the fight is there. The fight is there. You know, we've been in tough situations. And really, at this point, there isn't a whole lot of situations that we haven't been in, right? It's probably another one of those. Now, they're going to be different. Everyone has these unique challenges. But, you know, being down against Florida State, coming back there, you know, rallying and, and, and seeing our offense absolutely take over the game last game. So we've been in those situations, but now it's, it's how do we make sure we play a four-quarter game and a totally different type of opponent like we talked about. Was that the biggest sack of Curtis Weaver's season? I mean, I know he's had a lot of them, but you guys uh, get a touchdown to go up four, and he gets a sack. You guys get off the field to take an 11-point lead and kind of you know, put the Yeah, game. I mean, uh, rating his sacks, there's, there's been some big ones, but obviously that the timing on that was huge, you know, and he, he was rushing the passer all day long. He got him on the ground a few times, and, uh, you know, he just needs to smack that arm a little harder so the ball comes out. But, uh, but no, it was, it was, you know, I don't know where it ranks, but uh, I'm glad he got it. What have you seen out of David Moe the last month? David Moe uh, was a dominant player, no question. You know, from there, there's a guy from start to finish, you know, not just not just the leadership. I always talk about leadership with him, but obviously that is huge. He was absolute leader on the sideline, but, you know, his play, his leadership, it was all there. It was all there in a big game when we were under stress, and, and uh, man, you can't put a price tag on that.